Uh, Child of Light tells the story of Aurora, who is a young girl from 1895 Austria that wakes up one morning to find herself in the lost world of Lemuria. And uh, fairy tale creatures uh, live there. All the creatures you read about in books that you don't think are real, they're, they're real and they're here. And at first she thinks she's in a dream and she's trying to wake up. And then gradually she realizes that it's not a dream and that in fact she has to sneak into the throne room of the queen of the night in order to uh, find a mirror to take the journey home. And to get there, she has to recover the lost sun and the moon and the stars that the queen has stolen in order to uh, get the queen to retreat so she can get to the throne room. When uh, Patrick Plurd, the creative director, approached me with this idea to have a, a young girl who flew and he had the, the feeling of the world in a soundtrack that he had created and uh, had the paintings of John Bauer and other fairy tale artists saying, I want it to feel like this, I want space like this. So that's what he had and then of course when he approached me, he's like, oh my God, this is my opportunity to create uh, a story of someone from our world who stumbles upon a, another world. And uh, from there, you know, uh, it developed the idea that Aurora comes from 1895 Austria, and um, a lot of the events in the game have have uh, have to do with real places. Or the idea of Lemuria is also something that exists if you Wikipedia it. Um, there was a continent that scientists in the past thought existed between Australia and India, and so. Uh, there's a big overarching narrative having to do with why that, that space has vanished from our world and all of the fairy tale creatures are, are real creatures that exist in our books. So it's, it's like this place might actually exist and that to be able to create that in an interactive space is my dream. When uh, I was developing the world, we were thinking about Old English or other ideas and um, other ideas of how to create the right tone that matched the, the painterly aspect and the, the way that the music would feel. And so um, I started running the demo in traditional prose and then uh, we, had, we had been working with the concept that the game is a playable poem. Uh, and suddenly, you know, Pat came in one day and he sat down and he said, I have a crazy idea, don't do it but what if the game rhymed? And so my first reaction was, yeah, that is true, that's crazy. Um, but that night, I started really going into how would that work if it were possible? Because I wanted the game to have a distinctive literary style. And you know, to be able to create a pop, you know, a popular poem that's mainstream for today, that seemed absolutely impossible. You know, something that no one would ever attempt, and I love that. Um, I thought, okay, well, I don't want it to sound like Dr. Seuss, so every line can't rhyme, because I think that's too children's book. Um, and also, it, if you're playing for 15 hours, it gets really annoying. So, I didn't want that. And then also, every other line, rhyme, every other line rhyming, like Lewis Carroll's The Jabberwocky, I think also would start to get too melodic and too grating, uh, and then, I hit upon one of my favorite poems. I, I read it a lot because I love the fantasy of it again, Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, you know, which is about this crew on a doomed ship. And so that rhyme scheme is called ballad form, uh, where it's an A, B, C, B rhyme scheme where the second line rhymes with the fourth line and every, everything's written in I am's. So there's this rhythm like the C, but it doesn't, it's not in your face. Um, and I think it's, I would assume that it's called ballad form because you can write and write and write in it and it doesn't tire you. Once I found that uh, poetic form, I took the demo and I decided to do a try. And so I wrote that using the rhyme scheme and from there it just took off. And it's great because it allows uh, couplets for emphasis. So if you want to hit on a very important point, you, you stick a couplet in the middle of each four line stanza. And uh, because the game is in uh, text, which we knew from the very beginning, we weren't going to record many voices at all. Uh, and so it allows you to see you know, all the four lines together so the player is participating in the challenge of the rhyme scheme. You know, it's almost like watching an acrobat uh, do a trick that the audience can detect if you messed up. 
And so it's, it's, a, it's a feat. And I'm, I'm really proud of it. The whole feel of the game, I think, is a breath of fresh air in that it relaxes you and transports you to another place rather than uh, tightening you up and making you um, tense. Also, the artistic collaboration in the game, you know, the way that the, the art director directly expresses his vision through the, the world and the, the score also, um, the creator of the score is directly expressing her vision. Uh, and with my writing, no one uh, got between me and what I wrote. There was no um, management saying, I want you to change something or something else. It was uh, my decision what went into the game. And same thing with the gameplay. And so uh, I think that all of that self-expression is evident in the game. And I also think that the, you know, a fairy tale world that is set in kind of Eastern European darker fairy tales, but not, you know, American McGee's Alice. It's not trying to be gothic at all. Um, it's trying to create a earnest, sincere fairy tale that's bittersweet and true to life. Um, and then the fact that it's in rhyme also really sets it apart from other games. It's very important to me as a writer of video games that the gameplay itself tell the story because otherwise um, I think that you know, the, the story should be created in a different art form. Uh, I believe you know, that games are about acting, that you as a player get to um, act out a feeling or a, uh, a journey um, that someone else has lived or um, create your own journey. And so I think that, uh, you know, from the very beginning we knew Child of Light was going to be a JRPG. That was the director's vision. And so when I saw that, um, I knew that the story had to be about maturing because that's what happens in JRPG's mechanics and also about uh, collaborating because there are partners in the game that you join or, not, or don't join depending on what you want to do in combat. And also because of the co-op, you know, you're, you can sit there and play with another person on the couch who's playing Aurora's friend, the Firefly, Igniculus. And so that relationship also has to be a big part of the story because those are the mechanics that you're playing. And so at the heart of Child of Light is that, is Aurora's journey you know, the way she flies, the way she enters battle, who she's fighting with, and the story uh, enhances that. Or rather, the story is that, and then the, the plot enhances that. Right now in the industry, we have this space, this huge space in the middle between AAA action blockbusters, you know, like, Transformers the game, you know, our Call of Duties, and uh, small philosophical experiments that might exist in a gallery in Soho or in um, a small space for uh, a limited group of people. And that in the middle, there's this opportunity to do games like E.T., to do games like Juno. You know, the space that is so full of potential and I hope that, um, you know, with Child of Light, we're trying to wade into that area in the middle um, and explore it. And I think that there's this wonderful opportunity to visit whole new worlds um, that we can't even dream about right now. Child of Light comes out on April 30th on PC, Wii U, PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PS4, and uh, I hope you enjoy it.